Yo, 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 Don Mafia. Welcome to another edition of the Don Mafia Report, the very first episode of the off season. It's very exciting. You know why? Because my wounds have finally healed. And not only will I actually be able to watch this upcoming weekend's games without having an aneurysm, it's cool because I was looking at all of the potential content that I could potentially be giving you guys throughout the offseason. Most specifically today, I ended up stumbling upon this website called SpotTrack. It's an amazing website. Believe it or not, they did not sponsor this video, but I absolutely love it. This is for anybody that's ever been curious about a specific team's, you know, salary cap. Like, where is this money going? Who's getting paid what? Are they investing more in their offense, in their defense? And then more importantly, it breaks down unrestricted free agents, which is exactly what I wanted to be focusing on in this video today. Now, free agency is a very exciting time, but rather than looking at players that we can bring on to the bills for today, guys, I thought that it would be intriguing to look at some of the unrestricted free agents uh, that will be in 2020 that are currently on the Buffalo Bills right now. I sort of wanted to go through it and I wanted to, you know, walk us through it together and then make decisions on who we exactly want to keep around. I thought this video made sense because yesterday when Brandon Bean, when he was having his press conference, he said that don't expect the Buffalo Bills to go absolutely crazy during free agency. So while that did pain my heart a little bit, not going to lie to you, from what I got out of that, it sounded like he was trying to heavily invest within the current team that he has right now make them happy so we can build a team exclusively through the draft. Now, I'm sure that we'll pick up at least one or two studs, somewhat playmakers in free agency itself. But regardless, while it sounds like we have a lot of cap money, believe it or not, it goes a lot faster than you might think. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of these unrestricted free agents and let's see whether or not that it is likely for them to come back to the bills. And all right, guys. So like I said, this website is called Spot Track. Just in case you wanted to maybe check out some of your other favorite teams in the NBA, the NHL, the MLB, all of their contract information is living within this site. It is one of my favorite places to go during the offseason. The unrestricted free agents of 2020. Now, the first name that absolutely pops up, right? Is a name that we have been hearing all season. Somebody who the second that he put on a Bills uniform, he produced. And that is none other than Jordan Phillips. He has had a hell of a year. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. He played all 16 games. He stayed healthy. Nine and a half sacks, 31 tackles, 25 solo tackles, six assisted tackles, and one forced fumble. I mean, guys, this guy absolutely balled the out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, like I have said. But let's put it this way. If I was a gambling man, I have a feeling that based off of Jordan Phillips' performance this year, he is going to be looking for big, big money. I'm talking, you know, like a five to six year contract, minimum 12 to $15 million a year. And unfortunately, I just don't see Brandon Bean shelling out that kind of money. I really don't. On Twitter the other day, he actually posted a tweet where he was looking for somebody to sort of put together a highlight video for him. It's definitely well known that he's looking out to get the bag. And I mean, honestly, the way that he's been playing, I really can't, I really can't argue with him. You know, I mean, he deserved it. He's a boss. He's still 27 years old. As much as I would absolutely love to have Jordan Phillips on this team, don't get me wrong, I realistically see him walking away from the bills next we're gonna have to go to our the second biggest name that's on our unrestricted free agent so far this year uh which is none other than shaq lawson with shaq lawson right we didn't end up picking up his fifth year extension on his rookie contract and i'm not sure what happened maybe it had to do with the fact that you know he was sort of injury prone his first couple of years or maybe like something just switched in his head where all of a sudden dude man wanted to absolutely hit his prime. He had a hell of a year. He really did. I mean, it was shadowed over Jordan Phillips here, but as far as the defensive end that we needed him to be, he produced six and a half sacks, 32 tackles, 21 solo tackles, 
11 assisted tackles and one forced fumble. The guy absolutely um, played out of his mind. I'm not about to say that he's going to be cheap. He's going to be expensive, especially based off of the way that he played in 2019. But one thing that gives me hope is he did release a statement saying that he did want to stay in Buffalo. He did want to stay in Buffalo and if his agent and the team can agree upon a deal, then he would much prefer to be a Buffalo Bill. So in my opinion, I think that he is going to be the guy that we are going to sign. If it was between Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson, I have a feeling that Shaq Lawson is going to be the guy uh, that we signed to a contract and not Jordan Phillips. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely would love to have both of them. I mean, honestly, just imagine a defensive line of Shaq Lawson, Jordan Phillips, a healthy Harrison Phillips, and then let's say in an alternate reality, we signed Yannick Ngakwe during free agency. I mean, that, I mean, that D-line would give me the biggest chub you've ever seen in your entire life. Regardless, I do think that Shaq Lawson is uh, going to be the guy that does get signed between him and Jordan Phillips. There's maybe a couple of names that I think that I could foresee us maybe extending some type of contract out, but nothing that I would really overpay. We already know that Lorenzo Alexander is retiring, so that's a hole that needs to be filled. Frank Gore, uh, he is likely retiring say that I had to guess he's probably going to announce his retirement in the next week or so say that he does decide to come back as much as I appreciated his leadership and he assisted with the development of Devin Singletary I probably wouldn't sign him Quentin Spain yeah I would definitely say that Quentin Spain would be somebody that we would want to look into and want to give an extension to and honestly he did play amazing this year but I don't foresee him like asking for a you know, a blockbuster contract at the end of the day. Our offensive line depth is very, very important. And while I think that we need to continue to invest in it, whether or not that it's through free agency or whether or not that it's through the draft, but as far as what we have right now, he really didn't do that bad, right? Uh, so, so far, I only have Shaq Lawson and bringing back Quentin Spain. Kurt Coleman, I mean, he's getting up there in age, but as far as safety depth is concerned, I think that that should be something that we should consider. Corey Leguette, um, say that we can get him cheap. Yeah, for sure. So realistically, guys, those are like the main, those are the main people that I think that the Buffalo Bills should retain because do keep in mind, um, we do have a couple of guys that are going to be unrestricted free agents in 2021, which I'm not necessarily sure that uh, we should wait that long to extend them so we can keep them happy and make them want to stay in Buffalo. Specifically, Trey White, who I honestly think is going to be extended this offseason. I think that he's going to be one of the highest paid cornerbacks in the entire NFL. Jordan Poyer, uh, who has definitely deserved, definitely deserved a contract. I'm not sure if he deserves that blockbuster money. I uh, know that there's been stuff going on with Twitter recently. Uh, with his wife saying that he deserves like some big blockbuster money. He definitely deserves a raise. He's a baller I would love to see him continue to stay on this team. I wouldn't mind waiting until 2021 offseason to sign him again and then also Matt Milano who I wouldn't mind waiting until 2021 as well to put together some type of contract itself. But then again, guys, we do have a lot of cap space. So say, for example, that we did want to shell out, you know, some pretty big contracts to some of the guys that we um, have relied on, especially within our secondary, then yeah, by all means. Yeah, guys, that's basically my thoughts on some of the unrestricted free agents uh, that the Buffalo Bills should look into retaining during the off season. Do me a favor and comment your thoughts. Like, who do you think we should pay this off season? Should we extend Poyer, Trey, and Milano this year? Should we pay Jordan Phillips? Should we pay Shaq Lawson as well? Who should we pay to keep on our team? And should we keep money to go out into regular free agency and find some stars that can help us out from there? Thank you again for tuning in to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report. Guys, it's the off season. I'm bored as shit. Talk to me, all right? Follow me on Twitter, Real Dan Mitchell. Follow me on Instagram at Real Dan Mitchell. And send me, send me Buffalo Bills or NFL stuff. Please keep me entertained. Uh, next video, I'll probably do something about looking at a specific free agent that I would absolutely love to target during the offseason. So be on the lookout for that. And besides that, guys, thank you for tuning in. And let's go Buffalo.